going to be taking a slightly different tack today. We're going to be discussing some stuff that doesn't have a lot of civilian application, although there is some. And this is more in the uh, arena of tactics as opposed to martial arts or anything like that. And it's going to be a bit more serious in tone, and the reason why is because this gets people killed, people that I care about, and it is false. And it's the idea of the fatal funnel. And the fatal funnel is one of those things that is, it is, <laughs> it is canonized dogma within kind of the American tactical scene. And the thing is, is everybody has their own idea about why the fatal funnel is fatal. And some of them even have different ideas on what the fatal funnel actually is. And you you will see it. You will see descriptions of the fatal funnel in anything from manuals to tactical magazines to, oh God help me, but airsoft. And it's false. And the reason why I care is because a lot of, uh, I think there's better techniques out there. And the first response I get when I advocate those techniques is, well, what about the fatal funnel? Well, I'm going to talk about the fatal funnel. And I'm going to go point by point. And so this isn't going to be quite as uh, kind of off the cuff as most of my podcasts are. And that's because I'm presenting a logical argument here. And each point builds off of the last. And the reason why I did it like that is because a lot of the time when you argue something like this that's so entrenched in the culture, especially the tactical scene, you'll get a lot of circular logic and circular argumentation. So I'm presenting very much a if this, then this style of argument. And if you want to present a circular kind of argument, you know, that's on you. But it's not going to be based on critical thinking and hopefully I demonstrate that by the end of this. I used a video for this particular one, and the reason why is because sometimes it just... I mean, I could do a podcast, and most of you guys would know what I'm talking about. If you've done a lot of room clearing, you can literally visualize it when I'm talking about the one-man, two-man, three-man. But sometimes you really need to see it to kind of be like, oh. And so I'm really trying to uh, hammer this point home. And so, uh, bear with me. So we have a few, from what I can, from what I can see, I've boiled it down to a few possible ideas about the fatal funnel. And the first one is the fatal funnel is an inherent aspect of the room itself. So. You'll see some people, and they say that the fatal funnel is the width of the doorway, and they get, they get quite specific. It extends into the room in a cone shape through the center of the room. All right, that's one view. Another one is that the fatal funnel is an inherent aspect of the door opening itself when an enemy is present, regardless of where he is. Okay, that's another view. Then there's another view that it's an inherent aspect of the opening itself. So just the door opening, not in, not extending into the room. And that it is a fatal funnel because it draws fire. So it draws enemy fire. That's the third viewpoint. A fourth viewpoint is that the fatal funnel is an inherent aspect of the opening, the door opening itself, and the surrounding walls due to bullet penetration. So it's kind of an extension of the previous one. Basically, it draws fire to the door opening and the area around the door. So you can kind of consider that as a section B of that particular viewpoint. And the final point is it's an inherent aspect of the door opening itself because it serves as a choke point for team movement, which can be dangerous if uh, an, an obstruction in flow is encountered during the entry. So, those are the main points. I presented them in order that I'm going to tackle them, and I hope you'll see the reason why. So, the first one. 
It's an inherent factor of the room itself. Uh, no, this is false. Because, take a look at this. Let's remove this guy. And let's remove that guy. Is it any longer fatal? Well, no, of course not. So if it depends on people for its level of danger, then it can't be something that's unique to the room itself. Because it's not even potentially fatal, unless someone's actually in there. So the idea that there is a fatal funnel that extends into the room in the shape of a funnel, which I always think is kind of funny, because uh, if you look at it, the funnel is called a funnel because that's the shape of the entire container. But these people that advocate this viewpoint say that it's the shape of a funnel, even within a room, within a room, sorry, that is not shaped like a funnel. But the point being that it can't be an inherent aspect of the room itself. Okay, so that point is gone. So let's move to the next point. An inherent aspect of the door opening itself when an enemy is present regardless of where he is. So you have a guy off to the side. Even though he's over here, this is supposedly the fatal funnel. And that should be pretty obvious right there. No, because if you are not within an enemy's direct line of fire, he ceases to be an immediate threat. And also, if you change the walls in this featured scenario, the clearing technique that many would use also changes, regardless of the positioning of the combatants. In some cases, if certain walls are changed, it would be treated as two corners, regardless of the fact that everything else is the same. So we can see here that the common denominator in all of these is the corners. Also, many techniques, such as the penetrate and flood, or another technique called the largest threat technique, realize this truth, and they actually do, cro they do go across the center of the room. In Iraq, you can run the walls, but lots of us would be trying to run them around the furniture because we couldn't cross the center of the room due to what we believed was the fatal funnel. So obviously, our reasoning for the fatal funnel can't be the same as those that use the penetration techniques because otherwise we wouldn't be using a different technique. And so inconsistency is a major hallmark of this viewpoint, and it's not a sign of a true concept. Although the focus of this video is on the fatal funnel and not clearing techniques per se, I'd like to point a couple of things out. Residential homes have the style of rooms that are most likely to have the enemy in the center of the room due to the furniture on the sides of the walls, and that places the doorway directly within the line of fire. And yet, residential rooms are the ones most likely to demand the use of a clearing technique that crosses that center within that line of fire due to that same furniture being along the walls. If we want to get really ironic, running the wall is most likely to be used effectively in rooms like school classrooms because furniture is in the center of the room, like the desks, and so the threats are likely to be along the walls. But this should be pretty obvious that this just puts the entire team in the actual fatal funnel, which isn't a funnel coming out of the doorway, it's the line of fire. And so the line of fire is another actual consideration. Another view is that the inherent aspect of the opening itself is a fatal funnel because it draws fire. It draws fire because you're there. A doorway where you are not isn't going to draw more fire than a refrigerator where you are, hiding behind a fridge. He's going to shoot at the fridge. It's been shown quite frequently that number one man draws fire, particularly in the lateral bound and snap techniques. Or there's even older techniques. Really, I, I do not endorse these techniques. 
but it's where the one man would run the wall specifically to draw the fire of the uh, the enemy combatant while the rest of the team runs the wall in the opposite direction, and it creates sort of a crisscross of fires. Number one man's also the most frequently killed, even though if anyone has the element of surprise, you know, it should be him. Number two man, in some of the previously mentioned techniques like the lateral bound and snap, is often not even seen, and this is borne out in force on force and live fire. He's, he's rarely even seen, let alone fired upon. And that's because the intended target, number one man, is visually focused upon to the exclusion of any perceived fatal funnel in the doorway. The doorway ceases to be the focus of fire once the target leaves the doorway. So the main aspect of the fatal funnel cannot simply be the doorway. Rather, the common denominator is the position of the operator. That determines where the the fatal area is, and we've already established before that that the fatal area is the line of fire. So let's move to a related kind of variation of that. And this is... And it, the fatal funnel is an inherent aspect of the door opening itself and the surrounding walls due to drawing of fire and bullet penetration through the walls. This isn't even strictly an objection pertaining to the fatal funnel itself, but rather it's a cover and concealment issue. And so I would say it's irrelevant to this particular podcast. Now, I will be covering this issue in further discussions on actual clearing tactics. But suffice it to say for now that such an argument has little force when the people making it fail to point out that the exact same problem applies to clearing hallway corners, especially in American homes. I mean, we already pointed that out. A corner is a corner is a corner. And yet this doesn't prevent them from utilizing a pying technique or a high-low technique on the corner. And this is because the simple, obvious fact is some concealment is better than no concealment. And a door, for reasons already stated, does not draw more fire because of the mere fact that it is a door. The common denominator, as already mentioned, is line of fire and my positioning. And this should be obvious because that doesn't stop us from clearing corners the way we do. However, this is an issue that I do plan to discuss in depth in future podcasts and videos. So, uh, this is just something I kind of wanted to address because it's frequently pointed out. And hopefully, that kind of keeps you satiated until the next video. And a final one if you followed me up to this point, this pretty much leaves one last objection that I seem to encounter a lot. And it's one with some validity. And it's the idea that it's a fatal funnel and it's an inherent aspect of the door opening itself because it serves as a choke point for team movement. And that can be dangerous if there's an obstruction in flow during entry. Now, I can agree with this. Okay, I can. This is a legitimate objection in my mind as opposed to the other ones that uh, we previously covered. But... Here's the problem. It runs into sort of a chicken, what, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And it's a chicken and the egg style paradox where we try to cross the doorway as quickly as possible and then run the walls because of the fatal funnel. But the whole reason the fatal funnel exists is because we cross the doorway before the threat's cleared. So it's kind of this catch-22 that we created ourselves. The commonly used American style, we'll call them American style entry techniques, uh, they practice a method of overwhelming force, and it usually requires the entire team, but not always, to enter the room in methodical succession before taking up their sectors within the room. And because of our choice of this style of entry, we've dubbed the opening the fatal funnel. But who says we have to enter like that? Who says? If the fatal funnel, as most people understand it, doesn't exist, and it only exists when we move through the door, because we're moving the whole team or what have you through the door, who says we have to go through the door like that? If we do not enter in such a way that the doorway becomes an impediment to a two to four man element, 
or five man element team, you know, depending on the unit, then this objection, while legitimate, loses its force. So the previous I, I hope that all these points I've shown how some of them might sound all right in isolation, but when you look at it from the big picture, it's just it, it points to a false concept. The fatal funnel doesn't exist. Now, why is this even important? Why am I harping on it so much? Why do I feel so strongly about it? Because there are superior techniques out there, vastly superior techniques to the ones that we do. And I have problems with some of the room clearing techniques that we do as well. And the reason that units and departments are resisting the implementation of these superior techniques, among others, is a faulty belief in the concept of the fatal funnel. And it's getting people killed. It's getting my friends killed. It's getting your friends killed. It might get you killed. It almost got me killed. Is the technique that you are using right now necessitated by this incorrect, incorrect concept? And if so, isn't it time to update your training methodology? And I'm not just I'm not just trying to tear everything apart because that's not me. I am going to give a positive suggestion. Rather than let our techniques that we already presuppose dictate the danger, like the fatal funnel. Why don't we choose a technique based off of relevant considerations? And what are the relevant considerations that determine our technique? Well, we already looked at them. We have the enemy line of fire, we have my position, and we have corners. The method that I endorse is a system that keeps these actual relevant factors in mind. And it also, and this is really important, and I will cover this in future podcasts, it drastically simplifies and solves a lot of the known issues with the current, we'll call it American style approach to clearing. Some current instructors that teach a very similar, and I would argue probably even a better polished concept to the one I've used and recommended is the in extremis high threat systems guys. So if you can't wait until the next video, because these videos take time to make, be sure to take a look at their Facebook page and their YouTube videos if you want a sneak peek at kind of the approach that I'll be recommending and discussing in the future. But until then, you know, think about what I've said. Watch it multiple times. Ponder it because this is important, guys. This is a life or death issue, and it's based on crap. And uh, until then, you know, take care. Stay safe.